Cause I, I've never heard any of this, so I'm just like, what's going on? Hey guys, it's Zach, and today we have an exciting video. We're gonna be talking about four things Korean recruiters and talent scouts look for while casting possible trainees. So, as you guys know, I'm in a Korean wave class here in Singapore, and we have guest speakers all the time. And today, our guest speaker was named Angela, and she is a Korean recruiter and talent scout. And she flew here from Korea. She was in Singapore, and she did our lecture for us. It was amazing. She gave us a lot of information that I was just like, oh my god, like, I never knew this. Like, what, what is going on? It was just a more in-depth look at the trainee life and how you actually get picked. And she told us about the process that you go through being a normal person and living your everyday life to actually becoming a real trainee. So one thing that she told us that I thought was interesting was that kids in Korea start to train as early as four years old for debut. So basically from four to 14 years old, they're in pre-Chinese status. So that basically means that they're a normal person, they're living their everyday life, but they are showing interest in wanting to be casted as a trainee. So while you are a pre-trainee, you basically go to a pre-trainee school, and Angela mentioned that one of the popular schools in Korea right now uh, that is a pre-trainee school is called Deaf Company. So future idols are picked and casted straight from Deaf Company. So Deaf Company has monthly evaluations, and recruiters from big agencies will come in and watch these monthly evaluations, and they will invite anyone that catches their eye to a private audition. And once you get these private auditions, that is the golden ticket. That is the secluded audition. You are there. This is where you transition from a pre-trainee, from a normal person to an actual trainee. Angela told us that this is where you want to be. And to get that, you have to get casted from these private auditions. So before we go into the four things that recruiters look for in possible candidates, I'll just elaborate a little bit more about the audition process. Um, Angela definitely told us, as I just mentioned, the private audition is the top of the top. That is what you want to get. Um, you go there when you are a pre-trainee, you are invited by the host company, and it is basically shut off. There's no cameras, no recordings. Uh, nothing like that, it's just you and the company and they are seriously deciding whether to add you to their trainee roster. The other type of auditions are public, global, and online. So public auditions, you just line up outside of the company and Angela told us they have about 10 people come in at a time and she said she knows within 10 seconds if she wants to work with you or not. So all it takes is 10 seconds to make an impression. So if anybody's going on any of these public auditions, the first 10 seconds is the most important. All right, so global auditions. Angela told us that agents go out to different countries and this is for a variety. They do this for marketing purposes. So they want to have idols from a diverse background. They don't want them to all be from Korea. So that helps with their money. It helps with tapping into different markets. And then lastly, online auditions. So Angela told us that these are the easiest, they're the lowest cost, uh, they're the fastest auditions. But she said that they get a lot of odd and weird submissions. People try to hide their face. They try to look different. They try to make themselves look skinnier, look slimmer. Like she said, it's really mess that goes on with these. So they're not that reliable, but they do work uh, for convenience at times. All right, so let's get to the good part. Let's get to the four things that recruiters are looking for in their trainees. So thing number one is going to be visual. Angela mentioned that they are looking for a natural beauty that you were born with or a beauty that could possibly be sponsored. So sponsored beauty is basically the company paying for plastic surgery for their artists. Angela told me that this was super common in Korea for men and women that would like to work in the entertainment industry. She said that they do fillers, they can get double eyelid surgery, men can have abs plastic surgery. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but yeah. She mentioned that some of these plastic surgery procedures are even like birthday gifts for these kids, which I thought was a little bit crazy. And we were also talking in class about uh, Korean beauty standards and that the reason why they might think that they need these plastic surgeries is because of the idea and mindset that if you are beautiful, things will become easier for you and you will have more opportunities. So we talked about that in class, super interesting. All right, so the second thing that recruiters are looking for is skills. She said that all possible trainees must be able to dance. This is mandatory. Singing is not a must. Singing comes second, and I was kind of surprised. I was like, what? Cause I, I've never heard any of this, so I'm just like, what's going on? She was like, singing comes second, dance is first. She said, even if you can sing, all, like even if you can sing like amazing, you got the voice of an angel, like even if you can really do that with the singing, 
She said, they're gonna ask you to dance right after. It's inevitable, you cannot get away from dancing. Dance is one of the main, main, main things that you must know how to do. They're seeing who is really giving that 100%. She told me that a lot of the trainees give 99% and that just doesn't make the cut. That doesn't make it. She said, in order to make it, you have to give 100. So they have to see you doing that little bit extra. They have to see you pushing yourself a little bit more than the person next to you to give you a better chance to stand out and be picked. So you really have to make an impression on these recruiters. And someone that actually applies this and embodies this and an idol that comes to my mind from what I'm saying about this skill and giving this extra little bit, giving this extra little 100%, going a step further, uh, separating yourself from the people around you, someone that really does that is Kim Chunga. So if you guys don't know her she is amazing watch her videos I will put one of them here but she is totally embodying the second thing that the recruiters are looking for that I had mentioned with the skill and the technique and giving that extra wow factor and that extra 1% so check out Kim Chunga all right, so the third thing that recruiters are looking for is age. So Angela told us they are looking for trainees that are 14 to 20. She said, if you are 21 and above, you are probably too old, which is unfortunate. But in some cases, people have definitely overcame this age barrier. Um, she said the reason that they want them to be young is that they need them to train for at least two years. She said without this two years of training, they will not be properly equipped uh, to debut and they won't have all the necessary skills that are needed and fundamental skills that are needed. So uh, with these skills, obviously the vocal and dance training comes into that, but also they learn four languages at this time of their trainee status and trainee period. They learn English, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. So. These four languages they need to have a basic knowledge and understanding of and this is for a global appeal so they can definitely have promotions, they can do things, they can be able to communicate in other languages to reach a broader audience and variety of people. So that is why they're looking for younger trainees, pretty much so they are able to mold them at an earlier age. So the last thing that Korean recruiters are looking for is character. So they want you to generally be a good person overall. Um, Angela told me that they monitor some of their pre-trainees and they know that they are sleep and food deprived and they see how they react to pressure and how they handle pressure because when you're a trainee it's going to be very stressful and very hard on your life and if you cannot handle it at a pre-trainee stage you will not be able to handle it at a trainee stage and she told us that they had a number one pre-trainee pick that was amazing at everything she was a good visual she was a great dancer she had a good voice but she was too weak and she used the term blur. This is what they call the trainees that are not emotionally strong enough to withstand the lifestyle. She called them blur. So she said she was too weak emotionally to withstand everything. And ultimately she did not get invited to the big private auditions that could have made her a real trainee because of the fact that in the pre-trainee stage, she just couldn't keep up with it emotionally. And that's really sad. And she told us as well, candidates in the pre-training stage are monitored for behavior. So if any of them are acting malicious, if any of them are getting jealous of other people because they're doing better than them, if they're honestly just acting like really rotten and rude, they will not get selected for private auditions and they may even get kicked out of the pre-training school and just cut straight away from that. So character is definitely something important. And as I mentioned, they like to see that you have a generally good character and they like to build it while you are a trainee. So those are the four things that Angela told us that recruiters and talent scouts are looking for when they're picking trainees. But I had another question for Angela while she was here. I was just thinking, when am I gonna get like another chance to talk to a Korean recruiter ever? So I asked her after the trainees are picked, are they ever like paid or they compensated for just being there? And she told me that the trainees actually are paid and they're paid near 50 US dollars a week. So although this is like not much, it's something. So I didn't know that they were paid at all. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. I didn't know that. And we also talked about diets and she told us that the trainees need to be their height minus 120. So I need to do some more looking up about this, but apparently that's like super slim. And she told us that the reason was because they look 30% fatter on a rectangle screen. And I was like, what? Like, this is why they need to be so skinny because they look 30% fatter. Like, 
I'm just confused. Like, I, how did they even know it's 30% fatter? Like, what? And usually when they're training for a debut or for a comeback intensely, they usually can only eat 550 to 650 calories daily. So this is why you see a lot of the idols when they come back or after their debut, they're really fatigued and tired because they're barely eating and they're dancing all day, they're practicing all day, and they usually are food and sleep deprived. So, honestly, it's not good. I wish there was some way to overcome this in the future. Maybe they can think of something to let them like be able to eat more and have like a healthy diet and lifestyle while maintaining their practices. But we will see. All right, you guys, that was all we have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I definitely had a good time learning about all of this. But if you found this interesting, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. And we will see you guys soon.